Section 7, Advanced Topics. In this section, we'll cover best practices with physics, optimizing physics, predicting physics trajectory, as well as data-oriented technology stack, or DOTS, for Unity Physics. Best Practices with Physics. In this video, we will cover the best practices you should do. We'll see the inefficient steps to be avoided, and we'll look at the best project setup for best performance. Gotchas, do's, and don'ts. Gotchas are the helpful hints which are not always obvious when developing. Do's are the best practices that give us smooth results, and the don't list will be things to avoid because they create bottlenecks or otherwise bad performance. Some general gotchas. First of all, when you're setting up your project, mimic the world scale. A common problem when you start out with rigid bodies is things look like they're in slow motion. This is actually just due to scale. The default gravity settings assume that you have units corresponding to two units high for a human or four units long for a car. So try to use those scale or pretty close to it. Determinism. Generally speaking, today's Unity physics is not deterministic. That means that it's not going to repeat the exact same result on every machine every time. This is due to the way that different compilers and processors implement their math. However, in the future, Unity Dots physics promises determinism. Some general do's. Choose 2D versus 3D smartly. If you're doing a 2D project, don't use the 3D physics components. It's overkill. Static. For each game object, or go, in a project, set them to static if you notice they're not moving. This is floor, background, platform elements. It's a great optimization. Next, keep your scale at 1. If you can, try to keep your object scales at 1. That'll maximize the performance for rigid body and joints. Movement. Use rigid body move position and move rotation instead of direct transform access. Or use add force and add torque as we talked about before. Joints. Use small differences, less than 10 times different, in the masses between rigid body components. That'll give you smoother results. Things you shouldn't do in a general sense. Avoid making rotation or scale changes because this recreates the colliders and it's expensive to do. Don't use mesh colliders. If you can get away with it, use these simpler primitive colliders, box, sphere, etc. If you can even add multiple because mesh colliders are very expensive to operate. And avoid using wheel colliders. They're also very expensive. Some ray casting tips. Things to do. Use the least amount of rays to get the job done. Try to be specific using layer masks on your raycasts. Things not to do. Don't extend the ray's length more than you need to. If you know more or less that your level is 100 units, try and set that as the max so you're not scanning out into infinity, which is expensive. And don't use raycast against mesh glider. It's really expensive. Some good tips for a Unity project setup. Optimize the layer collision matrix. You can see it at the bottom of the screenshot. By default, everything collides with everything. You know, after you get your project set up, go ahead and uncheck the boxes that aren't needed. It's going to lead to better results. For Ragdoll, use equal mass for all rigid bodies. Avoid using small limit spans, like 5 or 15 or more. That's better. If it's jittery, update the default solver iterations. Use 20 or more. Some project settings in the time area. Do tweak the fixed time step. Tweak it to reach a good compromise between accuracy, which is a high value, and the CPU spent on physics, which is a low value. You can see there that if we tweak it to like 0.1, that means we're still getting 10 physics updates per second, and that's pretty good. Tweak the maximum allowed time step as well. Use 8 to 10 to cap the time spent on physics in your worst case scenario. Do use the Unity Profiler. Periodically, even during early development, open it up and investigate what large spikes in performance you have. Look for warnings too. Also, it'll show a warning there if, for example, you accidentally move something marked static, which is possible at gameplay, but really expensive. 